This is my review of the Livestream Broadcaster. So you can see the Livestream Broadcaster comes in a really nice device. I bought this off the Livestream website. You, they can, it'll ship it to you internationally. And it cost $495. Now I'm going to actually use this device to stream Livestream Mass in a church. Um, this is really nice because it's nice and small and portable and doesn't take up much space. You can see here that the, vi the device was on the top and here is just some uh, documentation saying that you bought the device and some terms and conditions. There's no uh, user guide or anything, uh, any document like that. Um, which some people might find a bit annoying. Uh, the only instructions you get are the instructions that are on the side of this box here, uh, the accessories box. Um, but it is very straightforward to uh, use anyway. So it comes with a number of different accessories and I was quite surprised with this. Um, that's a nice carrier bag, which is very, very nice. Um, so to protect it when you're on the move, because if you're using a device like this, you're obviously going to be traveling. They've also included international chargers, um, charging adapters. You've got European ones, you've got uh, UK and Ireland, and you've also got um, the US in there as well. This is really nice, and they've really thought about, you know, who's going to be using this device. They've also included a small Ethernet cable, uh, which isn't too handy, but... Um, it's nice that they included one nevertheless. And you can see there's the power brick. You just very easily um, snap the, the right adapter in there if you want. Uh, takes a little bit of, I was just trying to figure out how to put it in there. And you have to make sure it snaps in. You can see it comes out there. Um, it also comes with a HDMI cable, which I was very surprised with. It's also gold plated and it's nice and small because normally if you're using the live stream broadcaster, it's gonna be very close to the camera. You could even mount it right uh, on top of the camera if it's a professional camera. Uh, there's the American uh, adapter and here is a cool little mount. Uh, the Livestream Broadcaster has a camera mount on the bottom. So this will actually screw in and there's a, a Livestream sticker if you're interested in doing some uh, free advertising for a Livestream. <laughs> uh, so here you just screw the, the little adapter into the camera mount and on the other end is uh, like a shoe. So if you're using a professional camera that has a mount for uh, like a f an external flash, like on a DSLR or a, um, a shotgun microphone, you can use that adapter. Um, it's got an OLED display on it there that you can see. It's not the biggest display in the world, but you don't really need a big display on a device like this. Really, really nice. Um, on the back, you've got the HDMI input, the line in input, um, and you've also got a USB port for doing 3G and 4G, a DC power input, uh, an ethernet and a power switch. Now you had to pull out this little um, kind of thing to, to uh, activate the batteries uh, because obviously when it's in travel, you don't want the batteries to be plugged in. And it's got a really nice magnetic back to give you access to the top part of the device where the batteries are stored. You can put three AA batteries into it and power it off battery, li off, off battery life for about three hours, uh, live stream say, which is quite, quite good when you think about doing a live stream for three hours. You probably won't be doing a live stream for three hours. <laughs> um, so the device itself um, is quite it's very, very nice. It's very small. It doesn't look that small in, in this shot here, but it is actually a very small device. And it's covered in this kind of very rubberized material. It's very, very nice. Uh, so you can see here, I just plugged in the power and the ethernet cable into, into the device. And I am also going to plug in the HDMI cable into it. I'm using a camera here, which is the Canon Legria HF R205. Now this camera, I would highly recommend. I don't think they uh, make them anymore, but there's a successor to it, which is the Aura 306. A brilliant, brilliant camera, and it's got uh, clean HDMI output, so you don't get any of the menu items on the output, which is really important when you're using a device like this. Um, I was actually quite lucky when I was choosing the camera because at the time I just needed a camera and I didn't really think about the clean HDMI output. This is probably one of the cheapest cameras you can get with a clean HDMI output because most cameras with clean HDMI uh, are 
much more professional or more expensive cameras. So you can see here, I'm um, booting up the device. Um, takes a little while just to start up and get going. And then it asks you to put in some information for, or to connect to the internet. This has got Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and also you can stick a 3G or 4G dongle in there. So I tried to uh, connect through DHCP, and I don't think um, it's, it, it just didn't work uh, using DHCP, I think because my router doesn't support DHCP 6, it's only DHCP 5, so it couldn't uh, automatically get the settings, so I had to manually put in the settings, which was a little bit annoying, but I suppose my router isn't the most up-to-date. So I was connecting through the Ethernet and I just went into manual mode, and uh, I put in the IP address first, And then it asked me for the subnet mask, so I put that in. I just had to put it in, uh, put it all in manually. And also, I'd put in the router IP. And I also had to put in the DNS. So these are all things that would have been automatically gotten if uh, the DHCP had weren't. But I just had to put it in manually. And then once you're, uh, once you put in the, all those settings, the live stream broadcaster uh, connects to live stream and you're off. Now I had already configured this. What you do is you pair it with your device uh, or with your account. So it'll give you a kind of a key and then you put that key into pair on your computer. So uh, you want to log into your uh, live stream account and put in the thing. It's very, very easy. It'll go through the precise instructions to pairing the live stream broadcaster with your live stream account. It's a very, very nice thing. Uh, so here is the main menu. You can see I'm going into the quality settings here. You've got a number of different quality settings like mobile, normal, medium, high. It'll go up to 2.3 megabits per second if you have the bandwidth for HD uh, quality, which is very, very good. I selected the mobile, which is 198 kilobits per second, mostly because I can't go any higher than that on my current um, internet stream. Uh, which is kind of a shame, um, but even, and I'll show you the, the results uh, just a little bit later on, even with that uh, quality setting, it was still very, very good quality. You can select a the video uh, input. There's only one video input type, which is HDMI, but you can select your resolution. It'll automatically detect the resolution for you, or you can put it in manually. It'll do up to 1080p at 30 frames per second input. It'll only stream to 720p. And then you can also select the aspect ratio. You, it'll automatically do that, but if you're having a little bit of an issue, you might want to set the aspect ratio manually. You can also select your audio input. Now, this is something that's really cool. Um, you can select the audio source from the HDMI coming in. Uh, so if you have a HDMI camera that has a built-in um, microphone that allows you to use it through the HDMI, you can do that. And it also um, allows you to select it through the uh, line in. So you can use an external audio device, which is really, really nice. It doesn't just limit you to the uh, HDMI, which is very nice. So you could take like a mixer or a microphone or something like that and plug that directly in. And then you can see you've also got your channels that you can select, a stereo, a mono left or a mono right, if you want to only do mono. Um, mono left is usually just a standard mono. If you go mono right, then it'll only go through one headphone. Um, so I just set it to stereo. And then you've got some connection settings, so you can actually reset up your connection settings if you want to uh, connect uh, to using wireless or 3G or 4G connections. And you can also see your connection status there with your IP address and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. And then you've got some more account stuff. Um, so you can, you can just see your account status and there's some more options there as well. So then once you're ready, you want to get your camera ready. So I just wanted, I just was going to power up my camera right now. <clears throat> And uh, so there's a f there's one setting that I have to check on my camera, and that is if I go into the menu. Um, basically, what I want to do is make sure that the clean HDMI input is on. So I just go into my settings. It's different for every camera, but you can see here it's just um, to make sure that the 
um, menus are not being displayed on the HDMI output. And then I just go live. I have the option to notify my followers or not if I want to do that, if I want to announce it uh, to people who are following my uh, live stream channel. So you can see here is the live stream on my laptop. Um, it's live streaming right now, which is really, really cool. And you can see that the quality is quite good. It's not HD, but it is quite good for 198 kilobits per second. It is impressive. So uh, that is my review of the live stream broadcaster.